Hello everybody, it's Murialda here once again with the final part of our May 2019 Loot Haul. Woohoo, yes! And what a Loot Haul it's been. Very nice figure so far, and we're ending with another very, very beautiful one. <clears throat> so as you can see, I have Mephi 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 already, and she is pulled out. This one is a 1A scale by Alter. She is gorgeous, I love her, I was obsessed with her, I hunted her down, I paid lots of money, and I got her. We have another Mephi Meph. Yes. So, also, I have, since I am a little late to the party, uh, Flair has put out some announcements about how to assemble her and everything, and they've actually recommended hair dryers. So, I have a bowl of hot water. So, yeah. We'll, we'll see how necessary that is. Hopefully not, but probably will be. But, yeah. Uh, so this is Mephmera. This version is from Dungeon Travelers 2-2. Uh, let me get this up a little bit closer so I can read it. Dungeon Travelers 2-2 Yamiochi, Yamiochino Otome Tohajimari no Sho. That's a hell of a long name. Uh, it's a spinoff of the 2 Heart 2 series. Uh, she is a non-scale figure manufactured by Flair. And Mephimeth was released on May 16th of 2019. Five months after her original December 2018 release date. Uh, I ordered her well over a year ago, uh, March 27th of 2018. And she's not cheap. I paid uh, 14,700 yen for her, or $139.20. But she is finally here. And from what I can see through the box, she is gorgeous. And I am going to be very pleased. Uh, I will say, she is also sculpted and designed by the same group, artist, whatever, that did uh, Casual Tamamo, which is my favorite figure in my collection. So she's got lots going for her. So there is the front of the box. You got a nice uh, cut-out window showing uh, Mephi Meph. Her dress is behind here. The side is... This is unique. I don't know how well it's going to transfer on the camera, but it's layered. So you got like this cut-out around here and then you've got another layer with her behind it and it's just a really nice effect and I really like it. Uh, there is the back. Got some crud on it. And there is the other side once again with the same layered effect. You can kind of see like her ears going behind the outline and everything. It's unique and it's nice. I like it. Uh, back to the front, tilt her down and see her from the top. And then we can see her from the bottom with all the information on it. So yeah, that is Mephi Mef. She is in an all plastic box, which is a good thing. It looks cool, but it's also a pain in the ass too because it gets dirty and it's hard to open. The, like the, the flaps don't want to stay open, so it's hard to get everything out. Standard three seals. The nice thing about them is they don't like wrinkle when you open them. So pull her out. And then we'll pull her instructions out. So Mephi Mef is cast off. Her bra comes off, exposing her nipples. So unfortunately, this will have to be a multi part. I hate doing that, but we got to do it because YouTube is YouTube. Now, the inside is just like a yellowish marble texture. Nothing too terrible exciting. But if we look... Yeah, so like you got the cardboard insert with the picture of meth, and then you've got the paint on the, on the plastic box, which does the masking and everything, and it just looks good. I like it. So we'll put the box off to the side. For the shakiness. Uh, she does have instructions which do not show her nipples so uh, let's go ahead and put her back. Table is only so big so there's the instructions. So her torso comes apart. You got the dress which is the pan and the butt I've read and heard. Uh, you've got instructions on how to put her sword into her hand and tilt it into her hair and all that fun stuff. So uh, 
linked on MSC there, Flair did post a blog post showing how to assemble her and everything. So I did look at that. I should be able to do it, but we'll see. So let's uh, go ahead and tilt that down, bring her a little closer, and we'll do a spin around of her in the blister packaging. So she is quite well protected. There's lots of like uh, plastic foil and it's translucent as well. Uh, the separate blister has her uh, little purple bow which holds her skirt together and her sword. There's the side and back to the front. And she is quite a large girl. Definitely much larger than the 1 8 from Alter. So that's a nice thing. So we'll start by removing the little blister, if we can. There we go. And we'll pop the pieces out of here. Oh, it is taped on as well. So cut that and cut it over on the other side. The loud blister. But let's see if we can pop this out. It's not cooperating. So there is her purple bow. It's got very long tails. And on the back you can see two little tiny pegs which are supposed to hold the skirt together which those pegs better be made of like titanium or something. And then we have her sword. It's got quite the unique curvy shape to it. It's kind of like a flame looking sword. Uh, it's a little pointy, but it's not. doesn't feel like sh sharp. It doesn't feel like you'll hurt yourself, but still, don't stab it. Uh, it's got a nice guard with little spikies on it. And the spikies have a purple trim along the sides. You got the handle and you got the little pommel with a little blue jewel on it. And this separates right there so we'll put it together so that we don't lose pieces but and then we'll put it off to the side and now we'll get to the main blister of Meffy Meff so it envelops the entire turntable so it is a huge blister one opens rather easy. Uh, there is tape on the top of it. Did not see that there. So there's that. So we'll start off with the base. Um, looking at this, I feel the base is probably the weakest part of the figure. It's a translucent, smoky, like white circle base with some uh, multi multicolor flowers and some sparklies and it does have a metal peg that is a bonus she should be supported quite well with that so yeah maybe it was meth that was having the problems getting on the base because you went on pretty good but yeah so that's the base we'll see how she goes on uh, next we'll pull out her dress So it is wrapped in some, some thick uh, plastic. So there is her dress. It is quite large. Uh, it goes down, there's a black rim around it, and this kind of helps support her. There is shading in all the wrinkles and everything. Uh, on the back, you got a little jewel right in her spine line. She does have like some wings coming off the side of it. And this is from what I've read, a pain in the ass to get on because you have to kind of like peel it like this and there's like little tiny pegs. So, uh, Flair does recommend a hair dryer for this. So for now, I am going to soak it in hot water. And we'll just leave it in there like that for now until we're ready to put it on. So now, the only thing left in here is meth. Wow, she is weighty. It's a good sign of quality when the figure weighs a lot, <laughs> usually. Uh, 
Okay, so it's safe to take the the coverings off her boobs. So it is a plastic bag with a little bit of styrofoam in there. Um, same with on her knee. That's a thing, like a skirt. Hmm. Okay, so we do have to disassemble her a bit to get all this plastic off. So she separates at the waist. That actually came apart fairly easily. Uh, there is plastic going under her bra cups, but that we can kind of gently peel out while keeping this safe for YouTube. Uh, so the bra is removable. In fact, I'm going to look at it myself. It's kind of squishy as well. Uh, her nipples are painted a very, very faint pink. Um, I am noticing lots of little shiny bits, but I think it's just because I'm getting a little bit warm and sweating a little bit. So I'll make sure to keep her dry. But there is her lovely, lovely face and her fluffy, fluffy ears. I do think maybe... This is blasphemy, but I think maybe a little bit too much on the fluff. Uh, it's very detailed. You got all the little spikes. They are painted like a orangish color, white, yellowish orange. It looks good, but maybe just a little too much fluff. Uh, she is wearing a fluffy collar as well. Choker. Uh, she does have some fingerless gloves on. Fingers all individually done, except these two are kind of welded at the tips. She does have painted fingernails, very well sculpted. Uh, the other hand, she's got a long glove which goes over her elbow and it has all the fingers. So it's not a fingerless one. Uh, hair wise, uh, over here we've got a glued on piece. And lovely, lovely hair, lots and lots of hair. And it's just unique, uniquely shaped as well. Uh, she has large boobs, and with large boobs comes large cleavage. Uh, they are welded together, but again, it's sculpted so such that if you're not looking directly at the line, it just looks like they're pressed together. So it's very well done. Uh, her back, she's got a nice spine line. She does have hints of shoulder blades, but nothing super, super obvious. So, I do believe this is supposed to go under her, this ribbon is supposed to go under the, the uh, bottom half. I'm not positive yet. Um, so now we can get back to taking the plastic off of her. <laughs> so her skirt, little black underskirt does come off. Now we can take the plastic off of there. So here is her black underskirt. Honestly, unless you have the blue skirt on over this, I don't think it looks that great. So I'll either display her with the blue skirt. I, I mean, I'm going to display her with everything, but or I would take the skirt off, take this off and display her and basically her leotard. So her leotard, it's vacuum sealed to her belly button. So all the ribbing is sculpted quite nicely. Uh, she does have some stitching as well under her cleavage. Spin around to the back and you can see it goes up and has nice little designs on her back to help support her a little bit. She's got quite the nice booty. It's very tight so she does have the wedgie as well. Uh, her hips, it could just be the way she's standing but it is kind of feels a little bit strange how this one is sticking out to the side a bit. But it's not horrible. Uh, the crotch shot, booty shot, uh, from as far as I can tell, no camel toe, which is nice, but it is very small, so she is exposing quite a bit of flesh. Uh, she has nice stockings, which go, they're thigh highs, gotta love thigh highs, and they do have a nice little ribbon holding them on. Uh, legs. Nice, nice legs. Uh, compared to a lot of anime figures, they do seem short and stumpy a little bit. But they're like human, normal human-sized legs. Uh, she has some nice shoes. 
got some nice uh, designs on them. And little little blue flaps and everything. Look, they're, they're, they look good. And she does have black fuzzy ankle collars. Or whatever you would call those. And then on the bottom you got the little square peg for the peg hole. Or square hole for the square peg. But yeah, overall, I like her. Um, so what I'm going to do now... I was going to do this at the end, but I'm going to do it now. I'm going to pause this video, do the uh, Not Safe for YouTube part. It should be pretty quick, and then we'll come back, okay? Be right back. And welcome back to the YouTube part of the video. So we have Mef together. She has her bra on. She has her skirts off. And we'll do a quick little spin around of her like this. Um, I will say... Uh, her, the cast off looks good. The nipples, they do look better in person than they do on camera. They're, they're a little, on camera they're very hard to see because the pink paint is very similar to her skin tone, but you can see it better in person. Plus I don't have the best lighting now that the sun's going down and it's getting late. But yeah, there is Meffy Meff and she is just beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I said this in the cast off part, you want to display her up high because she is looking down. Like if I lift you up to where my eye level is right now, you can't see her face. So you definitely want to display her up high. So there she is. This is her with the, well, I was going to say the least amount of accessories, but the bra does come off. So almost the least amount, but that is not for this part of the video anymore. So we're gonna take her body off again, and we're gonna put her little underskirt on. So you can display her like this. I think it looks stupid because, I mean, the hem doesn't like flow with her body very well and it's like pointy and everything, but it is an option. So we'll show that real quick, and then we'll try to get her blue skirt on. So there is Meph with her skirt, uh, her, well, her underskirt on. Again, I would not display her like this. I don't think it looks good, but it is an option. So there's that. So now, the part I'm kind of dreading. So I'm going to take her torso off again, set it off to the side. I'm going to take her off the base. and leave the skirt on. So now, this has been soaking for quite a while in some very hot water. So I got some paper towels and we'll pull it out and we'll dry it off. May not do the best job right now just because of video, but still, want to do a decent enough job to get everything dry. It doesn't hurt to put your figures in water. Just don't put any like harsh chemical soaps in there. Just straight water is fine. Okay. So now she it's reasonably dry. Um, actually, so it kind of goes through here. You're supposed to like peel the skirt apart and then see right there there's two little turn the autofocus on two little peg holes on that blue part and if we look over here there's two little blue pegs it's supposed to peg together but it's going to be very tight I'm stretching it as much as I can Just about got it. This is why Flair recommends using a hair dryer, or and why I used hot water. But got that on, and then you put her purple bow into these two peg holes in the front. Again, you kind of have to 
squeeze, and I don't like doing this. It, I'm afraid there's going to be all sorts of blue paint transfers now, but we'll see. And kind of have to get one of the pegs in and then stretch the other one over, but honestly, it was a pain wasn't as hard as it could have been. I know a lot of people are having problems with that. That's why I used hot water. Luckily, Flair, yeah, Flair prepared us for that. And then I'm just lined her foot up with the peg and pushed down. And there we go. And now we can put her torso back on. When you put her torso on, the ribbon wraps around her body and you have to be careful that you line everything up. There's this purple ribbon here. You make sure it goes on the outside of her clothes and you just make sure like her hair is not getting caught under or anything. And then you just squeeze it all together. And there we go. So there she is with her skirt on. And then there's one last piece, which is her sword. And I'm just gonna look at the instructions real quick. Goes like this. So you can see like in the instruction, there's a little curve out, so it goes like this. So you take the handle off. Bring her a little bit closer for you guys. The handle goes through her hand and then the sword part kind of tilts under her hair and then up into the ha handle. And you just have to fiddle with it to get it right. And there we go. So, not horrible, but it's fiddly. You have to be prepared for it. And there we go. So now we'll go ahead and move the camera back and we'll do a spin around of her like this. So she is very beautiful. She is a pain. I mean, I've got a little bit of water in there still. So obviously I'm going to have to disassemble her and take pictures and everything later. So I'm not going to worry too much about it, but just be careful. So we'll do a spin around of her like this. She is quite, quite nice. So let's do some close-ups and then we'll bring out the altar meth and do comparisons. Make sure the bra is on tight. The bra does not want to stay on tight, so we'll fiddle with it later. As I said, you kind of have to go down to see her face. But she's got her fluffy ears, maybe a little too fluffy. It's got very lovely uh, skin, nice skin, white skin tone. The hands are all nice and dainty. I do like her asymmetric gloves. So like the one holding the sword is a full glove goes over her elbow and everything. The other one is just like a regular hand glove and it's got the fingers cut off. She's got her little fluffy choker. And then you got her little magician robe on. I, I'm guessing this is like her magician outfit. And now the little black underskirt looks a lot better because the uh, edge of it is covered by the blue part. I do believe in the original artwork, the inside of the cloak was purple. But it still looks good even not being purple. And then there is a little gap between the bottom of the dress and the base. And it overhangs the back a little bit. Lovely, lovely, lovely hair. And the sword is a nice little touch. So yeah, overall, very beautiful. Um, unfortunately, with my lighting and everything, her skin tone does appear yellow on camera. It is not yellow in person. It is a very lovely white. 
So a little slider off to the side. And we'll pull up Alters 1 8 scale meth. And yeah, big difference in size. But you can obviously, you can tell they're the same character despite the outfit change. The eyes are very similar, the face is similar. You got the fluffy ears, white hair. And, you know, just the similar body types and everything. And just, they're so beautiful. Unfortunately, Mef does not have a fluffy tail. So, that's a minus. Other than that, the only other real minus, aside from the assembly and the very sharp, hard downward gaze, don't really care for that base very much. But it is what it is, and I can live with it. Because we have the beautiful Mef. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is Mephmera. She is from Dungeon Travelers 2-2. Yamiochi no Otome to Hajimari no Sho. She is a non-scale figure manufactured by Flair. She was supposed to come out back in December of 2018. But she got delayed several times. Finally released on May 16th of 2019. I ordered her over a year ago on March 27th of 2018 and I paid 14,700 yen for her or $139.20. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. I'm out. Bye-bye.